So Layers of Fear tells the story of an insane painter who wishes to complete his magnum opus. As the player, you are this painter. Game, am I a painter? I am a shit painter. Insane artists that are obsessed with completing their work has been a subject that has been explored before in other games like Bioshock, but never has it been so much in the forefront as in this game. The game starts out with the painter coming home and as a player, the first thing you do, of course, is explore the environment. The game itself just looks beautiful. Uh, the lighting is really good. It ha sets a really nice ambience. Now, I like to theorize about what is going to happen in these kind of story-driven games. And my theory was that the painter would somehow implement real humans in, in his art, in his painting. Uh, albeit that he would paint dead people or use blood as paint. The first thing I did once I got past the main area was I went into the basement, which I thought was just a great idea in a horror game. Why not go to the basement first? Nothing bad ever happens there. Oh man, really? Like right off the bat, a basement? Okay, that's not so bad. Oh, okay, all right, really? Now all throughout the house you find several items that tell you things about the painter's past. A scratched out photo, feminine perfume, a note from a lover, burned music sheets. So my theory immediately shifted to the lover of the painter. Was he so obsessed with his lover that he wanted to implement her in the painting? A lot of stuff scattered about, a lot of bottles you start noticing. Throughout the house you find several bottles of alcohol, which is of course also a nice ingredient to certain madness. But then there was the child's room. And Ryan didn't even find this room, but the kid's room threw all kinds of new theories on the table. Did the painter and lover or wife had a child together that got killed or died, which broke them apart and made him insane? At a certain point, you enter a room and there's a big canvas in the middle. You feel like there's about to be a big reveal and you pull the thing, you pull off the uh, sheet and there's just nothing there. That was a bit of a reveal for nothing. The result is a little bit underwhelming. But from that point on, everything changes. Once you go back through the door in which you came, you notice that all the hallways and rooms have changed and that you are in this maze that doesn't make any sense. From that point on, it's pretty clear that you are inside the painter's own head. Simple and predictable jump scares get mixed with surprisingly good ones. The pacing is good, and slowly you gain more background information about the painter. The thought alone that the most beautiful piece of art doesn't have my name on it is killing me. So, will you marry me? The natural reaction to a painting is you want to sit there and look at it and examine it. But what they do when this game is you come up, you look at the painting, and as soon as you start like really getting a good look at it, it melts away and there's usually some kind of loud... Uh, noise associated with it and then the room usually changes in some kind of creepy way or the painting changes in some kind of creepy way or you see a piece of human flesh tagged onto the painting or something like that. Carefully flayed the skin. There you have my theory. After a while of walking through the same creepy corridors and experiencing freaky stuff happening around you, you come to this room where you find a bottle of blood. The game implies that it is the painter's own skin and blood that he used. In the jar and it just kept coming. The taste of copper haunted me the entire night. Why didn't I think of a syringe? From this point on, it becomes clear to me that the player is forced to collect six key materials for the painting spread throughout the game. Each time the painter finds one of these key materials, he goes back to the room with the canvas, and the painting changes. Ah! Did the painting change?
What is that? Flamingos? Is that a flamingo? I was a little bit disappointed with this because now it reminded me of so many of those collection horror games that were inspired by Slender. Up until the point of finding the blood file, all that the game had been doing was throw furniture around. The fuck was that? Oh. Great. Yeah, no, fantastic. After a while, you're not scared anymore. Ghost stuff doesn't really scare me. This sounds creepy, though. But on your journey searching for the third item, new elements get introduced. What is that? Oh! You see glimpses of this mysterious figure in the background. She starts to appear and she's super creepy. And at a certain point in big black ink, there's written, ignore her on the wall. So I abode by that rule of ignoring her. And whenever I would see that mysterious figure, I would stay the hell away from her. Nope. I really don't. I'm really not interested. <laughs> However, at a certain point, she blocks your path, and this happened. I don't know what to do. Girl? hallway and you kind of see her off in the distance and I remember I saw that part and I was just like ah oh, son of a bitch like I don't really this is the path we're going down this this is what I have to deal with so yeah I'm pretty sure now that I've, I've seen this <laughs> that's where I quit playing and decided I was done what I will praise the game for is that it has optional jump scares there are several small rooms and side doors that you can enter that are not on the main path uh. Yeah, no, you know what? We're not going in there. We play the game extremely differently. Your objective is to kind of explore and see all the things there is to see, whereas I just want the experience to be over. I don't like it. I just want it to be, yeah, just get to the end so I can stop playing it. All right, I'm gonna, like, maybe if I just, like, like power through this, like nothing bad will happen and it'll be all fine. Because of this, Ryan and I actually experience different jump scares sometimes. After finding the third and fourth material, which are bone dust and human hair, this message appeared. Wait, what? So the game wasn't finished. At least not at this point. You see, this game was released unfinished and I was aware that it was still being worked on and fleshed out, but I assumed that at least the story was complete. But I guess I was wrong. The final parts will be added in later for free. Because of this, it is kind of interesting to theorize about what the last two materials will be. I have my bets on human teeth and human eyeballs. Oh, great. Yeah, I was afraid of this shit. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't like this. I truly don't. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Please work. Oh, fuck me. Oh, no, no, please. I'll be good. Fucking Christ. I don't want to. I really don't. Whoa.
So that was our experience with the game, but we want to know what your experience was. Let us know in the comments below. And if there's a game that you'd like to see me and Max play next, let us know.